As we continue with our exploration of inscribed angles and circles, one of the things we'll notice in this is to always pay attention to make sure that you're reading what the question is asking because it says find the measure of the arc or the angle indicated. In this case, it's asking for an angle, and the angle is the angle NLM, which is right here. Now, we don't have any information about the angle except that we do know the arc from N to M is going to be 7x minus 10. And again, that's not much help except for we have another arc over here that is 13x minus 10. And if I take those two arcs and put them together, if you notice, the arc that gets created actually is a semicircle. Well, what do we know about semicircles and the arcs of semicircles? Yes, if you think about that, right, a semicircle is going to be 180 degrees. So this arc from L to M plus the arc from N to M is going to equal 180 degrees. And what we're going to be able to do is to find X as simply as this is just taking the two, adding them together, and they actually add up to 180 degrees. Well, given that, let's see what we got here, because we can add some like terms. We have 13x and 7x, which is going to make 20x. We have negative 10 and negative 10, which makes negative 20, and that equals 180. Now, the, the algebra actually gets pretty simple at this point, as you can see, because all we have to do now is actually take our negative 20. We're going to add it to both sides, and when we do, we're going to find out that we have this, that we have 20x now equals 200. We're going to divide both sides by 20, and that's going to tell us that x equals 10. Now, however, I wasn't asked to find x. I wasn't asked to find an arc. I was asked to find the measure of an angle. So what I'm going to do now is take this x equals 10. And remember, I'm looking for this angle that creates this arc. So I know x is 10. So what I have now is 7 times 10 minus 10, which is 70 minus 10, which would be 60. Now, what do we know about an arc? Well, we know this, that the angle... NLM, right here, this angle, NLM, and I'm going to write it right up here, NLM is equal to half the arc of NM, and in this case would be 60. Well, what happens when we take half of 60? Right, you're already thinking it, you know the answer already, that this angle is going to equal 30 degrees, and that's exactly what that angle is going to be, is going to be a 30 degree angle. And if you think about that, that makes a 30 degree angle. Watch this angle over here. This angle over here is going to have to be 90. Why is that? Well, because it actually creates the arc of the 180 degrees, and half of 180 creates 90. So now I know that over here I'm going to have a 60 degree angle, and I have what we call a 30, 60, 90 triangle that we'll be working with, and we have worked with in terms of how to work with those sides. But for right now, what we were trying to do in analyzing the circle was determine the angle that got created inscribed inside the circle, which was the angle NLM. All right, let's take a look at the next example. In this example, I notice that the directions are asking me to solve for x and y, and here's my x and my y. We're now, not where we're looking at this x, we're actually looking here. We're trying to find this x, and we're trying to find these y's and find out what they are. We're not going to find the angle. We're not going to find the, we're not going to find the arc. We're actually going to find x and y in this. So how we're going to start with this is actually by looking at where we can put some things together to find out something. Now, if I notice as I look, there's, there is the center of the circle, but nowhere do I get a diameter. Nowhere do I get anything that tells me any degrees. Because of that, I'm not going to have 180 degrees. There's no right angles to look for. So I'm going to have to do the next thing in looking at a circle, and that is take the whole circle into account. Well, to take the whole circle into account means that I'm looking at 360 degrees. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to start here at, at this point at x, and I'm going to follow around so that I can see right here that I have this arc. This arc represents this angle down here at point n. So I see that this angle point at angle at point n, which is actually measured by 16y.6, is going to create this arc up above. But if I look at it, I can see that the whole entire circle can now be created by putting the other part of the circle together, which is going to look like this. And when I go this direction, what I'm going to do is if I take this arc, I have now created the whole circle. But what I've created on this circle is I have from the point L, or the angle that has a measure of 10x, 
is going to create the entire circle when I go from X to N to M. So if you can see where this arc, actually this angle is going to create the arc from M to L to X going this direction. When I look at the other one that's actually in the brown color, I'm going to be moving from X to L to M that creates this arc and I have created the entire circle. Now what do I need to do with that? Well, I've, I know what the angle measures are in terms of X's and Y's, but I don't know the arcs and I need the arcs because that's what's going to give me the 360 degrees. Well, how I get the arc from X to N to M is by looking at the angle that is the inscribed angle that creates the arc, which is 10X. Now, as we've talked about before, an inscribed angle is half as big as the arc. Another way to say that is that the arc is twice as big as the angle. So I'm going to take this angle, times it by 2, and when I do, I'm going to get 20X is equal to the arc from X to N uh, from X to N to M. Now, at the same time, I'm going to come over and look at this other arc, made from the inscribed angle from X to N to M that makes the arc from X to L to M. Now I know you're hearing N's and M's and do they go together but if you're watching the where the pen's going it'll make sense but what I need is I need two 16 Y's plus 6 because the arc is twice as big as the angle. Well, 2 16 Y's is going to be 32 Y and at the same time 2 6's is going to be 12. What do I know now? Well, I know that 20 X plus the 32y plus the 12, which is the other arc, together they are going to make 360 degrees. So there's my 360 degrees. I have actually found the entire circle by looking at it. Now, if you notice, I've looked at two of the arcs from two of the angles, but there's two more angles. So I'm going to bring this picture back up again on a fresh on a fresh page, and let's look at the other two angles, and we're going to put some things together. So let's do that. So now, as you know, we looked at where the angle 10x was, which created the arc here, and we looked at the arc here. So we need to look at the arcs going this way. So I'd like to find the arc from L to X to M, which actually gets created by the angle from L to M to N, which is right here, which is going to be this angle, 10x minus 6. Again, as we said, the arc is twice as big as the angle, so I need two 10x's and two minus 6's, which is going to be 20x minus 12. Two 10x's, two minus 6's. At the same time, I want to now look at this other piece of the arc that gives me the whole circle from L to M to N, and what creates that arc is the angle that starts at point X, but the angle measure is 4 plus 18Y, which means that I need two 4's and two 18Y's to give me what this arc equals, because the arc, as we've said, is twice as big as the inscribed angle. So 2 4's is going to be 8, and 2 18Y's is going to be 36Y. That's going to give me an equation now, because once again, I have the entire circle, and that's going to look like this, 20X minus 12, plus 8 plus 36y equals my 360 as we saw before. Now, I'm going to put these two together, but before I do, one thing I want to do is do a little bit of work with this first equation that I can clean it up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together the negative 12 and the 8, which is going to give me this 20x, and then I have minus 4 plus 36y equals my 360. Okay, well, the next thing I can do is add 4 to both sides, why I'm doing this is I want to clean up this equation so that I can look at the X's and Y's on one side with the numbers without X's and Y's on the other side. We're actually going to be doing something from Algebra 1, which we call linear combinations. Now I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to put it back with the other equation, the first equation that we worked on, and then we're going to work them together. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So went ahead and brought in some of the other information. So now we can see what this looks like together. By the way, what you'll notice is that I came around in the blue dotted lines to show you the 8 plus 36y and came around on the red dotted lines to show you the 20x minus 12. What we want to do is actually get now is get the top equation. The first equation we had worked with is we want to get that equation ready to work with. And I just want to do that by bringing the 12 over to the other side. And it's going to give me this as an equation, 20x plus 32y is going to be equal to, when I do 360 minus 12, I'm going to get 348. Now, 
This starts to look a lot like Algebra 1 that you probably have worked with if you remember about how to solve simultaneous equations. And that's what we're going to do right now is to solve simultaneous equations. And how we do that is by having is eliminating one of the var variables. We're going to use the elimination method to do this. So when I see that I have a 20x and a 20x, if I could get one positive and one negative, I could literally add the lines together, eliminate the x's, and just find y. Since I have more y's down here, I'm going to go make my negative on the top line. I do that by timesing both lines by negative 1. So I'm going to times, when I say both lines, both sides by negative 1. And here's what that's going to look like. It's going to give me this, a negative 20x, a negative 32y, and a negative 348. Well, now what I've created is I have two new lines which are going to be here. And this is where I'm going to do my combination at 20 x minus 20x, which is going to be 0x's, that's now gone. 36y minus 32y is going to be 4y, and 364 minus 348 is going to leave me with 16. Well, now this is a pretty simple equation because I'm going to divide both sides by 4 and find out that y equals 4. I have now completed the first part of this. I have y equals 4. I need to find x. Well, how I'm going to find x is to go back and plug, plug in y back into the equation where I can find x. Now, I'm going to use this equation right here. It's quick and easy to use. 20x plus 32y equals 348. So let's use that right now. It's going to look like this. 20x plus 32y. But now I know that y equals 4, and that equals 348. And I'm literally substituting in the 4 in for the y, because that's what y equals. I'm going to work this out now to 20x plus 128 is going to equal 348. We're going to subtract 128 from both sides, as you know about solving equations. 128s will cancel out, leaves us with 20x is going to equal 220. When I take that now and divide both sides by 20, and as I divide both sides by 20, as you're going to see, and you could probably see already that 220 divided by 20 is going to give me a value of x equals 11. So we have now found what y equals and what x equals. Now, if the direction said to go back and find the angles or find the arcs, I could do that at this point. However, since they didn't do that, they said solve for x and solve for y. This problem is complete. And all I have to say here is that x equals 11, y equals 4, and that problem is complete. Now let's take a look at the next example. <music>